So WWE dropped a huge Raw after SummerSlam last night. If you want my full podcast length review, you can get it right now over at the Going In Raw podcast channel. But this is WrestleJuice. I ask you guys for your hot takes, and you guys left me a bunch of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at them, and I'll react to them because that's what we do over here. First up from DSIK on says Priest and Rhea are the real heels. And yesterday was simply karma. Finn made a good point tonight on Raw, last night on Raw. I I agree with this a thousand percent. I'll be honest, whenever something like really good happens in wrestling, when like there's a really good episode of something that drops, these are less hot takes and more just like reactions and thoughts because there's a lot of people like stuff and there's not a lot. But this could be considered a hot take right here. Priest and Rhea are the real heels, and yet the crowd loves them. They made two hugely over baby faces last night. Did you hear that crowd erupt for Rhea Ripley when she came down there, when she when she headbutted J.D. McDonough into Priest South of Heaven? The crowd absolutely exploded. But when you think about it, everything Finn said, everything J.D. said, what Dom did... It all makes perfect sense. That's what makes it so good is that it all makes perfect sense. They just act really sinister. But, you know, Priest was pretty damn selfish for a long run of his money in the bank. When Finn was going after that title, Priest happened to be around to kind of screw him out of the title every single time. The entire origin story of Rhea Ripley and Dom Mysterio, kind of not great, kind of fucked up. So, yeah, I kind of agree with this. Priest and Rhea, and Rhea, they're kind of the real heels here, but crowd loves them, and they view what happened as them getting screwed over by Finn and them. Uh, so that's where we're at in the story. But that's the best stuff. When the bad guys have good motivation, when the bad guys are in the right, and yet they're the bad guys for whatever reason, that's the best form of storytelling. Cole Johnson points out Bronson Reed looked more of a main eventer in five minutes than Solo has in the last three months. Yeah, I, I I agree that Bronson Reed looked great last night, smashing Seth Rollins with six tsunami. Shout out to Seth Rollins, by the way, for seemingly always being cool with being on the wrong end of this kind of stuff to get somebody else over. I imagine Seth is going to take some time off. And so in the process, hey, let's get this guy over. Let's get Bronson Reed over. And uh, he has desperately needed this. He's kind of just been spinning his wheels for a very, very long time. and uh, And now, hopefully... He gets some momentum. Hopefully they do something with this. And that kind of means this guy's got to win matches. Hopefully this isn't a situation where they're just sort of using Bronson Reed for a big Seth Rollins return where Seth Rollins is going to win all the matches. Hopefully they actually try to make something out of Bronson Reed. Um, But as of last night, he looked like a million bucks on a lot of you people. Thumbs up this comment so a lot of you agree with this. Similar to Bronson Reed, Real JT brings up Odyssey Jones. He said it took Odyssey Jones five minutes to get more over than Cross has been in two years. There, there's a lot they got to do with carrying Cross. I, I'll be honest with you, I feel like there's not that much that needs to be done with him, but they just need to do it. Um, yeah, Odyssey Jones looked like a million bucks last night. I like that Xavier Woods wasn't too enthralled with him coming to make the save. Now, what they're going to do with this next... Why is Woods not happy with Odyssey Jones being there? Is it because Kofi didn't tell him? Is it because they're validating what Karrion Cross is saying that there's a lack of trust between these two guys, that they're that they're past their prime, that they need to bring in new blood? Is it because Woods has bent that big E's not there and Odyssey Jones is trying to snake his way in? What is this story going to be? Whatever it is, Odyssey Jones got a massive pop last night, and hopefully they can continue his momentum as well. This is, could has the makings for a really, really good story here with the New Day. Tyreek says the security and backstage personnel were so laughably useless while Seth was getting attacked. Yeah, that is that is comedic. The way security just absolutely can never do anything right until, of course, they're introduced in NXT and they go on a Braun Breaker esque run. But uh, but yeah, while they have those black polo shirts on, security basically shouldn't even be there. Tyler Warden says all I could think about was how $1,316 is way too damn much for wrestling merchandise. Cold take. I think that's something we can all agree on, to be honest, but it's a beautiful title. I'm moving on from that. I'm still I'm still burnt by that. Right now and later says American Made, the name of Chad Gable's new group. Sounds like a campaign slogan. 
I mean, it's been on like all sorts of merchandise and, and cars and friggin' hats and shirts and all that. Made in America. I wonder why he just didn't call his group Made in America. That's probably already trademarked. American made. What do you guys think about the American? This is made. This was made in Vietnam. <laughs> Vietnam made. What do you guys think of that? Uh, the new name for Chad Gable. I'm fine with it. I mean, I don't know that there's any. He had American Alpha before, and then he had Alpha Academy, so he's going back to American, uh, which is fine. You know, what about them? What about them makes them extra American that they put that in their name? I mean, but hey, you know what, man? We're in campaign season right now, so American made. Maybe it's maybe it's apropos for the current climate. Rando Chris YouTube says presenting the Wyatt Six under their established names instead of renaming them after the Funfly Firefly Funhouse characters. Funfly, like the previous regime would likely have done, already gives the stable so much more longevity. Yes, these are people with histories, with like legacies in WWE for better or worse, and they're continuing them on. It's so relatable. For to actually give them names that they've had before to actually, yeah, no, I agree with this a thousand percent. It makes the entire thing so much more human. God, I love that main event. I thought it was such a cathartic moment for Eric Rowan to have specifically given that he was so close with Bray Wyatt and of course with uh, with uh, 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 Luke Harper, uh, John Huber. Um yeah, I, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I think so far, I'm really happy with the direction they're taking with the Wyatt Six. Here's my hot take. The, the Uncle Howdy mask, there's something about it that just doesn't fit Bo Dallas's face right. It makes him look kind of goofy. And I'm not huge on that mask. Maybe face paint would be better. I don't know. I hope he doesn't wrestle in that stuff, but he probably will, which is fine. It's fine. It's great. It's just a small aesthetic thing that gets under my skin. Kyle Tucker says Damian Priest is a more realistic main eventer. After losing the title, he's never felt like a world champion more than right now. This won't be his last reign. He's going to go on to become a Hall of Famer. I agree a thousand percent. This needed to... So often these things need to happen for these wrestlers, these performers to get to that next level with the crowd. You have to have everything taken away for them to understand you, to get on your side, to relate to you. And Damian Priest, absolutely a star was made last night. Uh, and, and it took him losing the world title for that to happen. Will he get it again? I don't know. They seem to be able to tell these stories without the necessity of the titles. Look at Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. They don't need a title. They have a bracelet to tell these stories. And, uh, and if they're able to craft that kind of thing for everybody, as my voice gives out, I just did the podcast. If they're able to do that for everybody, they're in really good shape. Oh, shit. Sean, God, Sean says Ripley and Priest should win the tag team titles off Finn and JD. I think it's going to be Sammy and Jay, but that's a really good idea. That's a really cool idea. I don't think they're going to do it, but goddamn, that's a neat idea. Eddie XP3 says best Raw of 2024. I, you know, I would say that I would claim that, but some of those Raws prior to WrestleMania were pretty damn good as well. I think the Raw after Mania was really, really good. It had that real, I think that was the one that had that really long Cody Rock thing, but there was a bunch of good stuff that happened as well. But uh, so I don't know. You tell me, you guys tell me, was this the best Raw of 2024? Because I think. I think WrestleMania had some really good ones. There was the one with, I think it was Rob Raptor Mania. Was it CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and uh, Seth Rollins had the segment? I don't know. My memory is so cloudy, but you guys let me know what's been the best Raw of 2024 so far. Gustavo Clarindo says the whole Judgment Day bit was the hottest, wildest thing I've seen on TV in a while. They're definitely the A story right now. That crowd reached a fever pitch during the segment. It is the A story, and Raw is the A show. I love Cody. I love what you know, might be happening with the bloodline, but man, Judgment Day is where it's at right now. It is absolutely the A story. Call Me Gus says, Carlito should have been a baby face. He's too funny and cool to be a heel. I imagine he'll have a turn at some point. They do need to explore that a little bit. Uh, but Rhea didn't seem too keen on Carlito being around. I don't think Priest really wanted him around either. So he's got good reason not to be with them. He's got a home in the current Judgment Day and the new Judgment Day, so why would he leave them if they're accepting of him? 
Wow, John Ozzy with a hot take says Gunther is the fourth most interesting act on the show, and it's not even close. Uh, I'm assuming, I mean, in terms of acts, are you talking about like feuds, wrestlers? What are you talking about? Because you got Judgment Day, probably number one. Drew, CM Punk, Seth Rollins, maybe number two. Uh, number three, maybe you're referring to the Wyatt Six. And then you got Gunther in there. I think Gunther is going to be such a good world champion. Of course, he's got Randy Orton coming up here at Bash at Berlin. I don't know how long his reign is going to be, if it's going to be a lengthier one. I don't know that he's going to be eclipsing like a Roman's universal championship record or anything like that. Um, but in terms of like, you don't need, you don't need everybody going after the world title. If everybody else has other better stuff to do. And so having a long world title ring with Gunther, as long as everybody else is engaged in really fun, interesting stuff that makes sense for them to be away from the world title. That's the perfect spot to be in. It shouldn't be everybody just wants title. It should be people are using their trauma to deal with life and that trauma can be other wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like it shouldn't always be about the title, but I love me Gunther. I love Gunther. Wow, W. Stein says Seth Rollins makes a better cowboy than Hangman Adam Page. How much did you love Seth Rollins showing up to confront CM Punk with basically cowboy attire? Oh, that was great. What a great reference. So Klepto says Braun should win the two out of three falls match with Sammy next week, even faster than he did the SummerSlam match. Talking like 90 seconds. Ooh, a squash match. I don't know if they're going to go that. I, I suspect, I suspect Judgment Day might get involved in that match somehow to motivate because they Jay and Sammy already have the tag title opportunity. They got the tag title shot. They've got that secure. So you got to figure judgment day might be coming after them proactively first. Anyways, that's going to do it for your guys's hot takes on Monday night. Raw. Look, if raw and SmackDown continue to be really, really good, maybe we'll make this hot takes for raws and SmackDowns a regular thing here at wrestle juice. I love my favorite thing about wrestle juice is is listen to what you guys have to say and reacting to that stuff uh and so if you like this maybe we'll keep on doing it we'll make it a regular feature here on the channel let me know what you guys think in the comments below hit that thumbs up hit the subscribe we'll see you guys around